Hello there. My name is Minister Barton Aaron Porter. And today we're going to continue our study of the great book of Daniel with the fourth chapter. Now, I'm going to be using the good old King James Version of the Bible as I always do. So I encourage you to get your Bibles out and to study along with me. Let's approach the throne. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach, we thank you, Father, for another day in the land of the living. We thank you for your mercies anew from day to day, Lord. So now, Father, we ask that you forgive us for our sins, wash us in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. And make us clean one more time, Father. Fill us up with your precious Holy Spirit, Lord. Mold us and make us into the type of people that you want us to be. And use us, Father, that you might get the glory, the praise, and the honor that you're worthy of. We thank you, Father, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. The one we call Jesus the Christ. Amen. Daniel chapter 4, verse 1. Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. Verse 2. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God has walked toward me. Verse 3. How great are his signs, and how, and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. And his dominion is from generation to generation. So here is King Nebuchadnezzar speaking to his people about the great God that created heaven and earth, the one true God, Jehovah, and the Lord and Savior, Jesus this is who he's talking about now. This is after his conversion. So this is when he's going to be con fully converted. All right? Verse 4. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. Fact, uh, that was verse 4, I meant. Verse 5. I saw a dream which made me afraid. And the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. 6. Therefore made I a decree to bring in all the wise men of Babylon before me, that they might make known unto me the interpretation of the dream. Now, this is the second dream that Nebuchadnezzar has had. So he called in all the wise men of Babylon to see if they could interpret the dream. Verse 7, Then came in the magicians, uh, the astrologers, the Chaldeans, and the soothsayers, and I told the dream before them. But they did not make known unto me the interpretation thereof. Verse 5, I mean verse 8. But at the last came, but at the last Daniel came in before me, whose name was Belteshazzar, according to the name of my God, and in whom is the spirit of the holy gods. And before him I told the dream, saying, verse 9, O Belteshazzar, Master of the Magicians. Now, this is a title that uh, Nebuchadnezzar bestowed upon Daniel. He was no magician, okay? <laughs> That's what he called it, just like the name that they gave him. He says, O Belteshazzar, Master of the Magicians, because I know that the Spirit of the Holy Gods is in thee, and, and no secret troubleth thee. Tell me the visions of my dream that I have seen and the interpretation thereof. And just like Nebuchadnezzar had given him a different name and a different title, when he said, I know that the spirit of the holy gods is in thee, that was based on something he believed. He didn't know what he was saying. He didn't know it was the Holy Spirit inside of Daniel, period. So that's why he was using the vernacular he was familiar with. And, and Daniel didn't feel the need to correct him because Daniel knew who he worshipped, okay? So I want to make sure I point that out. So he, he told 
Belshazzar, tell me the interpretation of my dream. 10. He said, thus were the visions of my head and my bed. I saw and behold a tree in the midst of the earth and the height thereof was great. So he says, I saw this huge tree and it was very, very tall. 11. The tree grew and was strong and the height thereof reached unto heaven and the sight thereof to the end of all the earth. 12. The leaves thereof were fair. The leaves of this tree were fair. And the fruit thereof much. There was a lot of fruit on this tree. And it was meat for all. There was enough fruit on this tree to feed everybody. The beasts of the field had shadow under it. And the fowls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs or on the branches thereof. And all flesh was fed of this tree. So he's telling Daniel about the dream. Verse 13. He says, I saw in the visions of my head upon my bed, and behold, a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. Now, when you look up the word watcher, it simply means an angel. So he says he saw an angel come down from heaven. 14, he cried aloud and said, thus, hew down the tree and cut off his branches, shake off his leaves and scatter his fruit. Let the beast get away from under it and the fowl uh, from his branches. So the angel came down and said, chop that tree down, cut off the branches, get rid of all the fruit, and get those animals out of here, and get those birds away from here. 15. Nevertheless, the angel said, leave the stump of, it, of his roots in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Now notice what he says here. Pay attention. He just told you the tree represents a person in the last part of this verse. He says, verse 15 again, Nevertheless, leave the stump of his roots in the earth. Don't dig up the root of this, the stump of this tree and its roots. Leave it in the earth. Even with a band of iron and brass, put a band of iron and brass around it in the tender grass of the field and let it be wet with the dew of heaven. You know, the dew of heaven comes up. Uh, it's mentioned as it's something that's going to wet it and, and, and possibly give it a chance to regrow. Okay. And then he says, and let his portion be with the beast in the grass of the earth. So this tree represents a person. He tells you right there. Uh, but Nebuchadnezzar didn't understand that. 16. Let his, see that heart be changed from man's, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. So he's telling the king the tree represents a person, but the king didn't get it. Now the word times, when you look it up, it means tech a year. So he says, let this person's heart be changed from a man's heart into an animal heart, that he's thinking like an animal, and let seven years pass over him while he's thinking like an animal, okay? 17. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basis of men. So God wants us to know that he's calling all the shots. There's nothing that can happen on this planet without God either causing it to happen or allowing it to happen, okay? 18, this dream, I, Nebuchadnezzar, have seen. Now thou, O Belteshazzar, declare the interpretation thereof. For as much as all the wise men of my kingdom are not able to make known unto me the interpretation, but thou art able, for the spirit of the holy gods is in thee. In other words, the Holy Spirit is in thee, which he didn't know to call the Holy Spirit. So he just called it the spirit of the holy gods. 19. Then Daniel, whose name was Belteshazzar, was astonished for one hour. Look at this. And his thoughts troubled him. The king spake and said to Belteshazzar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshazzar 
answered and said, My Lord, the dream be to them that hate thee. The dream be to them that hate you. And the interpretation thereof to thy enemies. And the interpretation to your enemies. Verse 20, that's 19. The tree that thou sawest which grew and was strong, whose height reached unto heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth. 21. Whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, and upon whose branches the fowls of the heavens, fowls of the heaven had their habitation. 22. It is thou, O king. It is you. That tree represents you. That's what he told him. It is thou, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown and reaches unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. So he said, this tree represents you, Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 23. And whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven and saying, hew down the tree and destroy it, leave, yet leave the stump of the roots thereof in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the wild beasts of the field till seven times pass over him. 24. This is, an inter this is the interpretation, O king. And this is the decree of the Most High, which has come upon my Lord the King. 25. That they shall drive thee from men. They will drive you from men. And thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the, of the field. Your dwelling place is going to be with the beasts of the field. And they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen. They're going to make you eat grass like oxen. And they shall wet thee, or wet you, with the dew of heaven. And seven times shall pass over thee, and seven years shall pass over you, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. So he says, you are going to be driven insane, and you're going to be living out in the wilderness like an animal for seven years until you know that God Almighty Jehovah rules in the kingdom of men. Okay? 26. And whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the stump of the tree roots, thy kingdom shall be sure unto thee, after that thou uh, shall have known that the heavens do rule. So he says, you're going to get your kingdom back seven years later, after you've learned your lesson, after you have been chastised by Almighty God and humbled before him. Uh, 27. Wherefore, King, let my counsel be acceptable unto thee, and break off thy sins by righteousness, and thy iniquities by showing mercy to the poor, if it may be a lengthening of thy trans tranquility. So he said, look, he said, Nebuchadnezzar, if you listen to me, this doesn't have to happen to you. You need to repent of your sins, show mercy to the poor, okay? And maybe God will spare you this whole ordeal. 28, it says, all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar, and we're going to see why. 29, at the end of 12 months, he walked in the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. Now, so God didn't put it upon him right away. 12 months he gave him, and he was walking in the palace in the kingdom of Babylon, the palace of the kingdom of Babylon. 30, the king spake and said, look what he said, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of my kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? So he didn't learn his lesson. He refused to acknowledge that Almighty God had given him that kingdom. He says, Is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty? 31. It says, While the word was in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed. Parted from thee. So soon when he made that statement, he heard a voice from heaven saying, Your kingdom is taken from you. 
32. The voice said also, And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field. They shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. So the Lord allowed this chastisement to come upon him because of his pride. Very important lesson here. God hates pride. He cannot stand it because pride is what got Satan the devil to rebel against God. Okay? Let's see what happens. Verse 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, and he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagle's feathers. You see that? And his nails like bird's claws. So he didn't have nobody to take care of his hygiene, and his hygiene uh, cut his hair and groom him and, and make sure his nails were cut. He was out there like an animal eating grass like an ox, and his hair just grew and grew and, and knotted like eagle's feathers, and uh, his nails grew like bird's claws. 34, look at this. And at the end of the days, at the end of seven years, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation 35, and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. They're counted as nothing in the presence of Almighty God, he says. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth. And none can stay his hand and say unto him, what doest thou? So he finally got it. He was fully converted now to a worshiper of the one true God, Jehovah God, his son Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit. He finally got it. And see, this is what you and I need to understand, that God Almighty is the creator of all things, and he rules in the kingdoms of man. And he can do whatever he wants, and none of us are in position to question what God does. His thoughts are not our thoughts, and his ways are not our ways. Whatever the Lord does is right because he's the creator of all. Nebuchadnezzar got it. Verse 36, at the same time my reason returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom my honor and brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my lords sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Just like Daniel said that the Lord was going to restore him to his kingdom after seven years of punishment. And he learned his lesson. Verse uh, 37, he says, Now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. So he learned the lesson that every creation on this planet will learn one way or the other. Even if they end up going into the lake of fire. The Bible says every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. You know, you got a lot of demon-possessed, lost folk out here speaking ill of God. You got atheists who say there is no God. But when judgment day come, they're going to bow before the creator of heaven and earth. They're going to bow at the great white throne judgment when our Lord and Savior, King Jesus, sits there to judge them. And they're going to give him the glory and honor and praise that he's worthy of. So, if this particular Bible study has been a blessing to you, I encourage you to go to Bart, uh, paypal.me slash Barton Porter. And please make a financial contribution of whatever you can afford to give. Whatever you give will be a tremendous blessing to me and this ministry. 
and you will be helping me to continue to produce these Bible studies and get the true teachings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit out. And if you like this particular shirt I'm wearing, this is my acronym for Jehovah, uh, Jeho I mean for Jesus, Jehovah's eternal son undid sin. And on the back for Christ, I have Christians have redemption in Savior's triumph. If you like this particular shirt, I would encourage you to go to my online t-shirt store at teespring.com slash stores slash Godwear and check out this shirt and some of the other Godwear there. I also have hoodies and long sleeves and coffee mugs. If you see something that you like, buy it because when you do that, you're also helping to support this ministry and my favorite charity, Feed My Starving Children. And I think God wears a good investment of your money because the Lord could use something as simple as a shirt with something about him and his son, our Savior, on it to plant a seed of truth in the mind of someone who's searching for God. So, until next time, this is Minister Barton Aaron Porter saying, may the good Lord continue to bless you and keep you all the days of your life. And be sure not to miss the next Bible study when we go into the fifth chapter of this great book of Daniel. God bless you. And goodbye.